Good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Fort Mill Town Council meeting. Uh, we're thrilled to see so many smiling faces. Um, we'll have a very good meeting tonight. So thank you for joining us. <clears throat> we will stand for a Pledge of Allegiance and an invocation. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together this evening. Thank you for helping us as we work to make our community as wonderful as it has been to us. Thank you for the people of this community, for the members of our staff, for our council. Please guide us in your name, we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> Please, if you have a mobile phone, an iPad, or anything that might ring, chirp, or spread an announcement, would you please silence it? Just yeah, one of those would be. Why on cue? Yeah, just make sure you Perfect. So please uh, turn it on silent so that we can give you our full attention and you ours. Thank you for joining us and we will begin uh, with council members. You have seen the May 22nd town council minutes. Uh, does anyone have a change, an addition, or a deletion? Hearing none, I move to approve. Thank I'll you. Second. I have a motion to approve in a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. thank you. Public comment. Pursuant to section 2-46 of the Code of Ordinances for the Town of Fort Mill, any citizen of the town may appear before council for the purpose of providing comments on any municipal matter except personnel matters. Those who wish to speak must sign in outside of council chambers prior to the start of the meeting. Citizens will be given three minutes each to speak. Do we have anyone signed in for comments this evening? No, Mayor, we do not. All right, thank you. Then we're going to move uh, immediately to presentations. Presentation number one is Stormwater Mural Project, Mina McLean McDonald. Thank you. This is a happy one. Yes, I'm excited to bring this presentation to y'all and also to have some of the wonderful artists who helped bring it to life in the room with us. So this is about the Stormwater um, Education Mural, which is titled, It's in Our Hands. So just to give you a little bit of an overview, I know y'all have heard about the mural project um, for months now, and I wanna give you a little bit of a, of a by the numbers. So we had eight staff members who prepped the area. We've had 71 volunteers paint. Wow. Over 50 hours of design work went into this mural from various artists with um, the Catawba River Arts Guild. Over 500 hours have been spent painting. And I wanna just reiterate for y'all, cause I know some of, some of y'all know, um, painting on the concrete, in the heat, uh, on their knees um, for hours and hours. Some people staying well past dark even and painting under the market lights at Kingsley. So uh, it, has, it has been incredible to see the work that these volunteers, and I wanna reiterate that too, volunteers have put into this. Um, 19 gallons of concrete stain, all donated from uh, Sherwin-Williams, awesome. and it has turned into one really amazing educational mural. So tying it back in with my stormwater art contest, just to, to make that loop back around, some of our student artists who, were, uh, who won some of the awards for the student art competition, they came out and helped paint, so I, got, I did capture a couple of them out there. Uh, uh, at the mural when they were helping to paint. But we, we did pull inspiration from, whoops, that went too fast, from their artwork. So their artwork was used by the Crag artists to kind of create some of the ideas behind the, the artwork that's in the mural. So you'll be able to actually see that if you look at some of the students' artwork. Um, like one little girl, her, her painting with the mountains and then the water coming down from there, that, that's, in the mural and then another um, a couple students had hands in the in their artwork and so you see the hands in the mural so <clears throat> really want to highlight and um, say a big big thank you the Catawba River Art Guild has been an incredible partner in this mural project again they were out there in the heat 
they are out there on their knees painting um, and and they have just done a tremendous job so I really just want to um, make sure that they know how appreciative we are of all their work that they put in and it has been um, a pleasure to get to know them out there uh, as, as they worked and I watched. <laughs> we also want to thank our sponsors. This has really been a huge community effort. We had um, our presenting sponsor, Dom Tar, and they came out. They were the first ones to put paint to con uh, well, concrete stain to concrete, um, and they came out and helped do some of the base coats. And Sherwin Williams, again, uh, making that donation of all the materials that we used. Kingsley has been a fabulous partner. Um, Olive's Mud Puddle, of course. Debbie Wissett <coughs> is also the owner of Olive's, but she's also the president of the Catawba River Art Guild, and she was the lead designer on the mural. So when you look at that incredible mural design, that I know I, everybody should have gotten that in their emails a couple months back. Um, that is just, it's all, you know, Debbie took all the artwork that, and ideas that Craig had come up with some of the different pieces of it, and then brought it all together to be this cohesive piece of artwork. And so it's just been really, really incredible. So, all right, and then I just have a little slideshow that has more photos in it, but I just, um, again, just the, the number of people who came together to make this happen, and this all started, um, you know, the stormwater department had the idea to do some artwork, just a little thing around some of the storm drains. Um, there's Dom Tar out there helping to paint the first day. So, and of course, the first day it was um, when Debbie was actually doing the chalk drawing, and then we did the paint on the black outline. It was the hottest day. <laughs> it was so hot. <laughs> but um, it's just really been incredible. And I, I really hope all of y'all have gotten your invitations for Friday, the ribbon cutting at 11 a.m. on Friday. We hope to see everybody there. There'll be cookies. <laughs> <laughs> She knows how to get us there. <laughs> right, just so you know, there'll be cookies. Um, so yeah, it's it's just really exciting. But I wanted to see if any if any of y'all had any um, questions or there was anything that y'all wanted to learn a little bit more about with the mural. I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Naturally, um, <laughs> I, I love the whole concept of pulling together art. Fort Mill has more art in it than people ever realize. We typically will celebrate baseball, basketball, football. We celebrate all the holidays, but the artists in Fort Mill are fantastic, and they always have been. So this just touches my heart because it brings together <coughs> a community of people that can visualize and see Fort Mill in a way that many of us do in our heart, but they provide that for everyone else. So just thank you so much for your gift and for giving this to our community. I, I love what this has provided. And Mina, thank you for your leadership in doing this. You have been phenomenal. Thank you. So uh, you've touched my heart, and I'm sure everyone that sees it feels the same way. Well, that's one thing that I think everybody, when y'all have been out there, um, we've had so many interactions already. And this is, you know, with the fence up and it not done yet. Uh, with people coming up and asking us questions and like oh wait what's that I see you know like one kid was really excited about the um, fi finding the black wing the, the red wing blackbird like he wanted to find that so because I had told him it was there it wasn't drawn yet I told him to come back <laughs> the so, poor kid. so the interactions that we're already having with the public the communication like um, where people are like asking questions about it what the purpose is we are gonna have some interpretive signage that will be permanent there at Kingsley in the landscaping and we're working on that right now so um, we'll get that drafted and f figured out so probably it won't be installed until like the fall <laughs> with the number of people that have to go back and forth on it but uh, we'll, we'll have that there and then there'll be an interactive component um, we have a certain number I'm not gonna say a certain number of animals that are in the mural and we'll sort of have a little bit of a seek and find so families can tell us online, they can scan a QR code, they can take a selfie on the otter, on the otter raft and tell us how many of the animals they found. And awesome. so we'll, we'll probably run like a little contest this fall around Stormwater Week. So really mm -hmm. excited to have that interactive component as well. And that'll hopefully get them to go to our website and learn a little bit more about why the mural is there. So. Well, it certainly is impressive as are all of you. So <laughs> council, why don't we give them a 
standing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if would, you are a member of CRAG, would you would you yes. please raise your hand yep. and let them know that you're who Why don't we do better than that? Why don't you stand and give us your name? I'll we'll start <laughs> 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 We'll start over here. Oh, hi. My name is Joanne Fago. I live in uh, TVK, and I'm a potter at Olives. Oh, of course. <laughs> Debbie. I'm Debbie Whitsett, and owner of Olives Mud Puddle and president of CRAG. And um, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tish Bialecki, and I'm one of the members of Craig and one of the artists on that the uh, mural, and I live in Fort Mill. Awesome. Okay. I'm Dr. Brad Sibeli, Vice President of the Arts Council of York County, immediate past president of the River Art Guild. Awesome. Yes, I'm Linda Principe, and I'm also a member of the Catawba River Arts Guild and the Arts Council of York County. I live in Carolina Orchards. We had met last yes, year. Yes, we got you. <laughs> Love you Very guys. proud to coming next week, too. Right? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Very proud to participate in the project. It's fantastic. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Wendy Hope. I'm a member of CRAG. Uh, I live in TPK, and uh, I'm a watercolor teacher. <coughs> Awesome. Hi, Carolina Orchard. <laughs> <laughs> well, just know that we all love you and we, we appreciate you. We got more over here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Mari Matamoros. I'm a member of the CRAG. I'm also curator of the Gallery 120 Clover. I live in Lake Wiley. And, uh, and she's one of the ones who's out there over, like, in the dark. Barbara's out there late. Like, she was out working. My husband let me borrow his precious. <laughs> yeah, she, she has put in a lot of hours. I think second only to Debbie in the number of hours no out there. So. Outstanding. And, sir, are you part of the art guild as well? The husband. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I'm sorry. He, he did Your support. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, thank it, you. He all. was involved because every time I go out there mm -hmm. when Debbie's there, he was there as well. So, yeah. You know, I'm carrying, you're, you're I'm carrying, yes. He helped a lot with schlepping and with the <laughs> truck. So it was great. Schlepping. I'm using that one. <laughs> so, anyway, but that, that concludes our presentation. I, I do hope, even if you can't make it to the ribbon cutting on Friday, that you'll come out um, and, and see it for yourself. It is, it is just absolutely beautiful. Well, it's, 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 it's great to follow what the mayor the, what the mayor said you know I think the 71 volunteer speaks volumes because that's what we preach get involved this is your hometown get involved and I think this is a prime example of how y'all made you know new friends you've got people involved who probably wouldn't have and it's I guess just it keeps giving back and this is a great thing and people will enjoy this for years to come so I look forward to the the official opening of it, and I'm gonna have to go look for all the animals that I didn't know. Yes, yes. Well, and, and the, the volunteers came from such a range because we had the public volunteers who were helping with just the base coat colors, and we had children out there, we had grandparents, we had um, one woman who was um, about eight months pregnant out there uh, painting while her husband's deployed. And she just said she, she used to do art a lot when she was younger and she really wanted to get back into it. And so now she's wanting to learn more about it um, and what we could be doing like once, once she's had the baby, she said. So um, so she's, she's due this month. So. And I know I was on the volunteer list, but signed up towards the end of it. And we didn't even get to volunteer. I know. It the happens. overachievers we have here. Yeah. Um, so looking forward to it. And I know we've talked a little bit about how we take a lesson like this and how do we communicate it within the classrooms too mm -hmm. because a lot of the schools here are asking how can we talk preach talk um, teach about the uh, environment and making it better and how we're protecting it and things we're doing and this is a great example of how we're educating in a different way than just a textbook or a mm -hmm. computer so I'm looking forward to seeing it come to life with the classroom yes because really we are going to continue the stormwater art competition that's going to be a reoccurring project in the cool. fall again and uh, we'll actually shift gears a little bit with that and have each school have a mini competition at the school and then the winners artwork will actually get put on the 
uh, storm drain in front of their school. We've got, I'm looking at some different ways to do that with like heat transfer vinyls or decals. So it'd be something that could be temporary for the school. Perfect. So it'd only be there for like a school year. <laughs> and then and then we could replace it in the, in the next fall, so. This is great. Thank yeah. you for your hard work. Thank yep. you. I hope this is the first of many community mm -hmm. art projects. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. We yeah. appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Just want to add a couple more things. Mina, thank you for all the, the head, head up the program. Again, 11 a.m. Friday. Uh, Miss Debbie, I, I want to personally recognize you because we had a conversation last week and I think you underestimated. You said you had 160 hours that you personally put into this project. I, I bet it's probably more than that. So I, I think she, she's off by like I, a, at least, a, a, it should be 200. I agree. <laughs> so th again, thank you for, for your vision and everything else. So we, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. I really, yeah, thank you. Well. Thank you so much. We will move now to presentation number two. This is recognition of Sergeant Marion Harriet. Bob Tasher will bestow this honor. Mayor, is it okay if I have the officers come in? Oh, please. Please, please by all means. <coughs> oh, this one's going to make me cry. Um. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for giving me a moment to talk about Sergeant Harriet and a pretty impressive event that he was involved with on uh, February 28th. Um, on that evening, this is his shift. He, um, he's a newly, newly promoted sergeant for the shift. Uh, this, these are his guys showing extra support for him and appreciation for all that he does. Um, on the 28th of February, it was Tuesday night, we were, our officers were responding to a request for assistance from uh, from another agency that had, was pursuing a, a car at very high, triple digits into our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. The officers proceeded to, uh, to try to <coughs> intercept, to try to do what they could to assist that, that scenario. And while the, um, the driver of the vehicle was trying to evade law enforcement, they turned into uh, Springfield Elementary, into the entrance of Springfield Elementary. Um, unfortunately, that, that uh, young man lost control of his vehicle. It went off the road. Uh, it struck an embankment into a cul and jammed into a culvert pipe where the vehicle caught on fire and the occupants of the vehicles suffered pretty significant injuries. Um, one of the subjects, the front seat passenger, actually was ejected out of the vehicle. Sergeant Harriet was the first to arrive on scene. Um, he quickly assessed the scenario, switching from a, um, an, an engagement and enforcement act to a life-saving act. Um, he, is, he was the first to come across the, the young man that was ejected out of the vehicle and immediately switched gears, made some excellent, excellent decisions, um, <coughs> was able to move the, the young man away from harm's way with the vehicle being on fire. It wasn't safe to provide medical attention at that location. He was able to get this young man, move him to a safer direction, um, very consistent with his training, and uh, just did an outstanding job. Uh, as soon as he got him to a safe area, he started doing the following the assessment protocol that we, we teach, and he realized that this young man was not breathing and was unconscious. Um, Sergeant Harriet, without delay, began giving him CPR right away and was effectively able to get this young man breathing again on his own. Um, Sergeant Harriet continued to provide medical attention to this young man until uh, fire and EMS personnel, which we were grateful for, uh, showed up and started providing a much higher level of, of care. Um, there was no break in service. Sergeant Harriet quickly uh, changed gears into enforcement mode, but they started securing the scene. He was giving directions to the other officers. It was just really, it was just a great sight to see, a great model for all of our officers to follow. So I'd like to honor Sergeant Harriet for just that outstanding job, as always. Oh my. You ruined my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Harriet, thank you for treating everyone like they were all our children. Thank you for running into an emergency, not away. Thank you for paying attention in class mm -hmm. and knowing what to do in each of those situations. I sleep well at night because of all of you. It, it's just, Stephen, Bob, everybody, you don't know, I don't believe you know the depth of how much we admire, appreciate, respect, 
and love you. But you are what makes Fort Mill wonderful. Absolutely. Thank you so much for what you did and what you do every single day. And don't ruin my makeup again. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. Well, Council? Anybody? Well, thank you. Well, what I was going to say is that, uh, again, thank you for that. But you know what? You didn't think about it. You just, it was the right thing to do. You went in. So that speaks a lot to you, but that also speaks a lot to the training that not only you, but everybody else here has received. Um, when it was time to act, you did it. You know, you didn't think about it. And you'd do it again t tonight if you had to, you know. So thank you. Well, I think the, the momentum in the country there went through the, we, we won't say the defund, but, but we're the complete opposite. Yes, we, we are. really appreciate all y'all do. Yes. yes, we are. Uh, yes, even we when are. I get stopped and say you were speeding, <laughs> you know what I was speeding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take another job to make sure that you have one. How about that? We, we got your back. We, we definitely got Yes. Yeah. It's incredible. It's just, I don't know how we got so blessed, but it's incredible. We love each of you, and we know what you do. We do. Well, you yes. feel safe having you guys on our side, knowing mm -hmm. I came home one night and there was something going on in my neighborhood, and I was like, wow, man, you're on top of it. And we appreciate all you guys do for us to keep us safe. Thank you. Well, and Thank everybody you. on here has children, and we all have children and ourselves who have not made the best decisions in life. Um, and I tell my kids every day, be smart or don't get caught. And unfortunately, this kid got caught um, in a situation that he probably never expected to go to that level. And again, thank you for being there to protect him and for his parents. Um, I know. I know. You're doing it again. I, know. I mean, I can't imagine being the parents and having to thank you, number one, for chasing my kid. But then thank you for saving his life and we appreciate um do you have family members here today with you yes. or others you'd like to recognize yes, because yeah. you did as perfect you? as you are i, I know there's um, a path that that came from so your family yeah. members will can you, you introduce, introduce them? them yes that was my wife Catherine. she's there um daughter mary Catherine's over in the corner uh with my parents in the back of my brother my brother-in-law jackson and we know they're proud of you. Like, oh my like goodness. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, you're a gift to us. Yes. You yeah. are. Yeah. Thank you. As you all are. And yes. thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. And we I feel like we need another standing ovation. I'm kind of enjoying this tonight. <laughs> from the police department. Never a short session. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. We appreciate and because it. this is videotaped and will be presented to our community repeatedly, let this also be a lesson. Don't speed. Don't do stupid things that endanger the lives of very special people that might have to save you because of stupid decisions. And it is a stupid decision to drive that fast, run from an officer, and put yourself and that officer in that position. I want everyone to think about this every time they get at the wheel and think that it's not just you. It could be a whole lot of people. That car could have hit other people. You could have been injured or died addressing a car on fire. So please, please remember, drive safely or don't drive. Just don't drive. Please. Thank you. Thank I you. think the other side, too, I can kind of testify real quick, is we had a gathering in our neighborhood back in Whitewood Park a few weeks ago and saw several of these guys in the yard kicking mm -hmm. around footballs with the kids or throwing footballs with the kids, kicking balls with the kids and stuff. And that's that's the human side. I mean, they're, they're real people like we are, but it, you guys step up and, and do things like this. And just every day, putting yourself out there where a lot of people would not be brave enough to do. So just, uh, again, I reiterate, so proud of you guys, and thank you for, for all you do in our community, keeping it special. Yes, well, and, and just piggyback, and hate to tag this on, but I know there are some special resource officers at a um, session or a conference this week, right. and you want to talk about those that are in the danger zone, being oh, yeah. in the, you know, especially my kids at the high school, I know, but I, I will say every SRO that's been at Catawba Ridge or any of the schools along the way where my children have been, 
that's their best friend and that's what we want for our kids is mm -hmm. to think the police officers in our community are their best friends so thank you everybody for what a phenomenal department that we have in the community yes. it's because of you guys that's yes, so the thank police you. department thank you. yes thank you very much thank you all appreciate you guys thank you Surely we have something for him. Oh, yeah. The Maserati's in the parking lot. I think he can turn the cameras on. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You'll be safe tonight, too, please. Yes. Every night. They do that right before budget. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like having a packed house right before we say we need <laughs> a bigger facility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not crying anymore. <laughs> I'm not crying anymore. I'm not crying. You're crying. Okay. Well, it's hard to talk about. <laughs> um, but we must do our business that we do each and every day, and they're all equally important. So presentation number three is the 2023 Independence Day celebration. Jakana, thank you for joining us this evening. See if you can make us cry. Thank you. No. <laughs> no. I've got some big shoes to fill. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that was amazing. Okay. So I am going to present um, the Fort Mill Independence Day celebration and the town of Fort Mill's 150th anniversary party. Um, it's going to be on Monday, July 3rd at uh, Walter Elijah Park in the F Fort Mill Amphitheater at 345 North White Street. And the event's going to be 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. At 6 p.m., we're going to kick off our evening with a patriotic contest, and it's open to all ages, and all you have to do is be at the Fort Mill Amphitheater stage at 6, dressed in your most patriotic attire, and we're going to be giving out prizes to winners of that. And then from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the Amphitheater stage, Rocky Lynn will be doing his patriotic show. He is a veteran who travels around the country performing his own music and more, and he and his band will be performing the patriotic show. And then we're going to have the Independence Day in town's 150th ceremony at 7.30 p.m. at the Amphitheater stage. Um, we'll be doing a special ceremony with the welcome, opening prayer, posting of our colors, the pledge, the national anthem. We we'll have special uh, VIP introductions, special remarks, and then um, presentation of the Town of Fort Mill 150th anniversary resolution um, and other special music. And then from 8 p.m. to 9.15 p.m., we have Autumn Tide that will be performing, and they do a variety of music. And then over in the food truck court, we'll be having music and games um, from DJ Brown Sound. And unfortunately, this is going <laughs> to make me cry, but he passed away this past week. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So he, and I know everybody always knows he's dancing around. He's always having all kinds of fun. But um, he passed away, but he has some people that will, um, are trying to continue on with his business. Wow. Um, and then we have a list of food vendors. Um, we have a great lineup there, Sprinkle of Love, Abbott's Frozen Custard, Chancho's Tacos, Charlie B's Seafood, Cousins Maine Lobster, Hobbs Nuts, Jam Rock Drug Spot, Jace Made Lemonade, King of Fire, Kona Ice, Crave Food Truck, Pelicans, Popcorn Heaven, S&K Funnel Cakes, Salute Chew, That Wine Truck, and Wits Frozen Custard. And then we have some great vendors um, that are going to be offering a, a variety of things, cookies and kids' activities. And then we'll also have beer and wine available. We have roving entertainment, our yard games, and other special kids' activities. 
And then we're also celebrating the town of Fort Mill's 150th party. Um, we're going to have our FM 150 historical photo display. We have some Fort Mill 150 photo ops. We're giving away 1,000 cookies um, with our town of Fort Mill logo. Um, we're going to do the special presentation that by our, the Honorable South Carolina House Representative Ray Felder. She'll be pre presenting the Town of Fort Mills um, resolution for the 150th anniversary during our ceremony. And then we have some other special Fort Mill 150 giveaways. And we're going to have a special tent set up in the middle of the park um, for these special things. And then we're going to have our fireworks display at 9.15. And this is just a site map of our event. We have our vendors over on the amphitheater side, our food trucks over on the opposite side, and then our town um, of Fort Mill 150 events will be set up there in the middle. And we do have just a small road closure for this event, North White Street from Old Nation to Ardry. We will be closing that from approximately 8.30 to 10 p.m. for our fireworks show. And then Ardry Street will also be closed um, during our event from 4 to 10. Parking, we have parking available at Veterans Park at 106 <coughs> North White Street, Calhoun Street Park, to 203 Calhoun Street. Um, looms way and then we have handicapped parking behind the amphitheater and this is some pictures from 2022 um, and this year we are seeking a resolution designating water Elijah Park at on Monday July 3rd from 6 to 9 30 as the site of a public festival in which alcoholic beverages may be sold possessed and consumed and to authorize a special event permit for live music and sound amplifying equipment and to authorize the fireworks display um, from this time and details are in the resolution which I will be doing later <coughs> And then our next presentation <coughs> is um, for the firing of the cannons. This is the 51st annual of the firing of the cannons, and it's going to be on Tuesday, July 4th at the bandstand on Main Street in Fort Mill at 10 a.m. And during our ceremony, we will have um, the welcome, opening prayer, posting of flags, the pledge, star-spangled banner. We'll have recognition of our dignitaries there. We'll have his, the history of the firing of the cannons. And then also we are recognizing the Short family as this being their 50th year as cannoneers. Um, and we will be presenting them medals for that. We'll have special music. Um, and then we'll have the cannon firing. Mm -hmm. And this is the Short family last year doing the firing. And then um, we'll have some other, some road closures and all. We won't be having vendors or anything at this event. We'll just be doing the ceremony with the firing of the cannons. But our road closures will be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. We have to close um, certain areas for the safety of the firing. Um, and then, and these are the ones listed, South White Street from Maine to Spratt, Main Street from Academy to Tom Hall, Confederate from Maine to Monroe White, and then North White Street from Maine to Claiborne, Railroad Avenue. Um, from 9 to 11. And we do have to cone off Main Street early that morning, and then we'll just be coning off a few spots on Railroad Avenue as well for that. Um, and we also have to cone off some veterans lot parking spaces just because of the way the cannons are aimed. Parking for this is in Veterans Park at 106 North White Street. We have the downtown municipal lots, um, town hall, at 200 Tom Hall Street and behind the downtown merchants, as well as First Baptist Church always offers us their lot at 121 Monroe White Street. And we are seeking a resolution designating the bandstand in Confederate Park located on Main Street as the site of a public event and to authorize a special event <coughs> permit for live music, sound amplifying equipment, and the firing of the cannons on Tuesday, July 4th at 10 to 11 a.m. Chicano, I want to first thank you for such a complete presentation. Um, you know, we've worked on these things for several years, and that was one of the very best. 
Secondarily, I would like to make certain that everyone understands that we'll be watching this or is here tonight, that historically we've held our 4th of July on Main Street. When the event itself began to draw over 4,000 people into our somewhat narrow Main Street, um, we had to make some significant changes um, to ensure the safety of everyone that would attend that event or the length of the event that we previously have held. But we didn't want to take away the historic nature of the cannon firing. So what we've done is to work to provide both. Um, the big July the 3rd event, everybody's off on the 4th, so it shouldn't be a thing to be out too late uh, and enjoy the 150th birthday of our community and the fireworks. And then we will have our cannon firing um, the next morning. So we're doing everything we can um, as, a, as a town and staff and council to ensure that we have the events that are so meaningful to all of us, but that we protect safety of our community first. <clears throat> so in doing that, I'd like to recognize all of the staff and you for having to plan two events mm -hmm. and prepare for two events on a holiday that is truly for everyone. So thank you uh, to police, fire, parks and rec, events, all town staff, Virginia, Davy, every Penelope, everyone works collectively to make these events possible for our community and enjoyable. But again, our number one item is safety. So that's the reason for the shift in hopes that we can have something for everybody and that this will be an, a joyous July 4th and 150th birthday celebration for the town. So thank you so much. Thank you. No, and I'd, fo I'd follow up. Thank you, Chicana. And I'd, yes. I'd say, I don't know how you continue to do excellence in the staff and pulling these together because I think that's a great solution. Um, and I think I gained five pounds just reading when you were reading the vendor list. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know it's a lot of work for everybody. And, and thank you, Mayor, for calling it out because it feels I know the it's police and uh, the staff works and all the other stuff. People don't think about that. So, a million details to get that. But uh, I know a lot of people are looking forward to it and the cannon firing, and it's our 150th anniversary, so it's a very yeah. special yeah. year. Really. Uh, and it's, we don't want to get, get that watered down because, you know, it's, uh, you know, that we've been celebrating the 150th all year, and I think it's kind of like, the, to me, it's kind of like a highlight. So, yeah. so yeah. thank you so much. And for those of you that will attend, it's always hot. I don't care <laughs> what time we do it, it's always hot. So, so uh, don't be surprised. Yes, you know. right. Dress keep accordingly. Your, keep your car remotes really close because it's going to set off every car alarm in a quarter mile. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a newcomer to Fort Mill and you haven't heard this, everybody knows what I'm going to say. Um, we used to, when we fired the cannons when I was a kid, it would blow out some of the plate glass right. windows, mm -hmm. just the sheer sound, reverberations and right. Some, it was in the Fort Mill Times building there for a yes. while we blew out the windows. So we have mitigated and done what is necessary to make sure we don't do that anymore. Um, but yeah, canon improvement. So thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. We thank appreciate you. you. Just one more thing. I just want to compliment you on, I see where you moved the vendors to this year. I know there were a couple of events last year when they were kind of moved over to the right-hand side of the park. And they kind of felt like they were out. So thank you for taking that feedback and moving them in closer and keeping them more engaged and everything. So it just shows you don't just throw this out there. You put a lot of time and effort into yes. your plan. So yeah, thank we, you. we do. And we appreciate the feedback that we get. Try to make things better and better. That's great. Awesome. It shows. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. We will move into our old business items. Old business item number one, public hearing and second reading, an ordinance to adopt the American Rescue Plan fund budget for the town of Fort Mill, South Carolina. We will open the public hearing at this time. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Seeing no one move, we're going to close the public hearing and move to the second reading. Chris Pettit is our subject matter expert. Chris, has anything <clears throat> changed since the first reading? There are no changes since first reading. Does anyone have any questions in regards to this? Hearing none, I'll call for a motion. Make a motion to approve uh, whole business item number one. Mm -hmm. Second. 
I have a motion to approve and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you so much. New business item number one, a resolution for the proposed resurfacing and road widening slash intersection improvement projects for Pennies for Progress 5 program. Penelope Karagunas is our subject matter expert. Good evening. Um, this is a resolution for the proposed resurfacing and road widening intersection improvements projects for the Pennies for Progress 5 program. Um, just a little history, this is the fifth York County Project Sales and Use Tax Program to be voted on by the residents of York County on November 5th, 2024. This is also known as the Pennies for Progress 5 program. This program is a continuation of the previous one cent sales tax program passed by referendum in November of 2017, and it's not an addition to the previous tax. Um, if approved, the collection would begin on May 1st of 2025. York County reached out to me, um, to the town of Fort Mill, for the town to identify four resurfacing projects and four road widening intersection improvements to be discussed for the Pennies for um, Progress 5 program. The citizen committee that will be listening to the Pennies for um, Pennies 5 program will hold a public meeting on July 19th at 6 p.m. at Catawba Ridge um, High School. And this is an opportunity for the residents um, to voice their <laughs> opinion concerns in front of that committee um, back on May 22nd we had an information and discussion item that we talked about um, certain projects and also about prioritization I'm going to read these but this is tonight you know it's subject for discussion so um, if I, I look forward to hearing any discussion that we will have tonight but what was um, suggested at the May 22nd, 2023 meeting by town council was the prioritization of the re recommended resurfacing projects. Number one would be Banks Road from Fairway Drive to Wolfpack Trail. Number two, Tom Hall Street from Main Street to Bank Street. Number three, Academy Street from Main Street to Bank Street. And the fourth um, prioritization for the recommended resurfacing resurfacing project was Main Street. Now for the prioritization of the recommended road widening slash intersex um, improvement project, the first one, first priority was to widen bypass US 21 from Highway 160 to Sutton Road um, at the intersection of Fort Mill Parkway. The second priority was three lane North White Street from Horse Road to a new roundabout at Old Nation Road. The third priority was to widen the Fort Mill Parkway from the railroad overpass at U.S. Foods to Holbrook Road. And the fourth priority was to have pedestrian improvements on Claiborne Street, including a new pedestrian bridge over the railroad to help the pedestrian flow to Main Street. And so tonight is what staff is asking is for a resolution as I prepare for the presentation and to for the recommendation for my report to the committee on July 19th, I need a resolution from the town council. Um, and I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Yeah, I had, a, I just reached out to Patrick Hamilton because I had and some of his staff, because I had some questions of my own. And I think there had been some concern about the cost of the bypass and the bridge and not being able to fund that mm -hmm. personally for me and i asked that question and they said that that would not be an issue that you don't have to tear the bridge down you are going to can simply expand it and that i also asked one of the commissioners the same question and they they said the money could be there if that was one of our top priority projects mm -hmm. um, i'm just throwing that out there for discussion well, to further that discussion, I think it's important to note that we're not the only people that get pennies mm -hmm. money. And no matter how, this process has worked the same each and every year. Every yeah. year, they ask us for recommendations, we discuss those, and we provide those every time. It hasn't changed. Those recommendations go before that commission that changes every year and then they make recommendations to the overall pennies project along with everyone around us 
So I do think it's important that we get our arms around what it is we would like to ask for, but to keep in mind that if we ask for something that is competitive and necessary, and I don't disagree that that bypass was undersized the day it opened, and the bridge is an issue. But I also think that with Patrick's response, did he happen to give you a cost for widening that bridge? I did not ask for a cost. Mm, that's kind of, in, it's really kind of important. So just note that no matter what we decide as a council, that it will go into a process that's lengthy, cumbersome, and highly competitive. So I'd like to think that what we ask for is exactly what we want because we only get that shot before it would roll to the next Penny's project. There's a tone in my voice right now that I don't like, and it's less about this discussion and more about there's not a person in this town that hasn't said openly, we have a problem with transportation. <laughs> we have a problem with transportation. Do you know how many people came to the meeting at Riverview the other night? How many citizens came? I will tell you there were more council people that came to that meeting than we had residents. Mm, right. So it is very difficult for this council to come up with recommendations and our staff that we feel are legitimate needs and wanted needs in our community, right. and the community doesn't come to the meetings to support the actual process. So, yes, I am being a little more stern, but I think it's important. We're not, it's, it, we're not in this alone. We're doing this for our community, and we do everything we can to garner the information and do what's right. But that community that complains needs to show up at those meetings, right. and they need to voice their concerns accordingly. Especially the big meeting we have coming up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the time for, if you're watching at home, we had Nation Forward last time, and it was the biggest crowd in the Penny's tour. It County was incredible. One. And we need that turnout again this time. If people, we, we need the support. Yeah, well. yeah, exactly. And, and if people, you get tired of sitting in traffic, come to the meeting. And, and show the, the county officials and show those the penny staff man fort mill really wants our support because that i have heard that that meeting was in 2017 mm -hmm. and i and it's 2023 mm -hmm. six years later and i still hear people talk about fort mill had the biggest crowd mm -hmm. of outreach and and chuck epps got up did a great you know presentation and we need we need that same turnout again i mean uh any way we can get it and that'll right? be july the 19th yes yes sir at at Catawba Ridge High School at 6 p.m. Yeah. And again, just remember, we can we can fill it to capacity and overflow into the parking lot. It still goes into a process mm -hmm. where the money distribution will be determined based on that process. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying is that we need the support of our community behind right. us right. as we make those decisions mm -hmm. and move forward within the process to get what we can get. Penelope, the um, process for the other areas around the community where they also asked for four listings of free paving and then four of the widening intersection sidewalk type projects were they also limited to that many I don't know that for a fact but uh, you know I would believe they did the same thing Patrick Hamilton called me and I asked him and he said that we need four for the okay. resurfacing it's so I, I would assume process. it's it's consistent Good. Um, I haven't had any conversation with any other jurisdiction and they work to make open that process you know they, they'll certainly as Chris has indicated they'll answer a phone call and speak with you but I, I think it's really important that you can't just fuss and not follow through you know right. you, you really have to follow through mm -hmm. and and help with making those decisions in which we go to the table to get the funding that might be available and the reason i'm this way is because i've been doing this eight years and i'm just telling you no matter how great we have as far as a request it doesn't always mm -hmm. trump other requests right. and that's all i want to make sure that the public understands one attend the meetings two be involved in helping with that and three don't set your expectations way high it, it takes years for these projects mm -hmm to come to fruition, to get funded, to get the right of way, to get the engineering, and then to get it in place. Years. And I'm not talking a couple. 
I see John Marks in the back. John, you come to all our RFATS meetings. You can put an amen on that, can't you? It, it is truly a process that no one understands. It, it's incredibly difficult. Well, I do think I want to just reiterate what the mayor said about the, the there's a group of put together, that committee that goes through and does that. So everyone submits into it. There's a whole independent committee that, that makes those decisions, if I'm correct, Mayor? They make recommendations to the the pennies commission right yes. so um so i think we we do our part and yes. we hope for the best that is because we, do, could, do we need part. all of it i mean I, I, and other groups say. need the same thing yeah yeah yes. and, we, and we could put eight more on there and it still wouldn't be enough so right and that's that's the point i'm trying to make mm -hmm. yep. exactly when we look at these um i know we've been given some information about the trip counts and you know um the busyness of all of these but they're all important projects that we've talked about for quite some time for any of these that fall off of that pennies five project list we don't technically build roads so what would we do to try to source other funding or other areas that we might have to cover some of these this is it yeah well this is the only one in which the the public is paying that additional tax and and quite frankly it's unique in the state and it has been uber successful in making up the difference mm -hmm. between what monies are collected by the state by the federal government distributed and and there's a been a big change this year in that distribution i know i'll mess up all the acronyms there's only this many but we went to being from being a not an RTO. Um, Metropolitan. We went to an MPO. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. yeah. We, we graduated in our population to where we are not participating in the Charlotte mm -hmm. section. We have our own. Uh, and when I say our own, I don't mean the town of Fort Mill. I, I mean Rock Hill, Clover, York, Lancaster, Fort Mill, uh, Lake Wiley. We're all in this. And, but it opened the door for us to get some additional federal funding that we did not have before so you know we are making progress but again progress in this topic in this subject is years in the making it is not make a decision today and see it by the end of next year we're talking 30-year plans mm -hmm. so it, it to your question Lisa uh, that was a lot of pontification <laughs> to get to the answer okay. Um, you know, we don't, when we looked at impact fees in Fort Mill, we were very careful on that last one about transportation. We could not raise enough money through impact fees to even meet the matches that would be required for us to obtain some of the grant money that was out there. So we didn't tax our community for something we couldn't use that we would have to turn around and return to them because of the, the regulation. On, on impact fees. We use the impact fees that we could um, and, and make a difference to our community. So we don't have impact fees. We couldn't raise taxes that much. That might cut down on traffic, um, but we have to go back to our fats and to the groups that make those decisions on the money that comes down and how to distribute it into the whole of the communities, not just us. So it's, it's, it's pretty difficult. Yeah. I just think people see the Tepper Bridge now um, and how that money came about and wonder why we can't get it. And well, um, we've got to figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> the, the state, you know, there was a lot going on in that decision that was state oriented for the economics of it. And it's real interesting that they were able to do that and we're still waiting on our 160 I 77 reconfiguration. Mm -hmm. So um, don't think I don't fuss about it every time. <laughs> Um, but it, it is a, a pretty interesting Penelope sits on the technical support team for our fats. It's uh, it's interesting how things happen. Absolutely. I would say it's easy to be right behind a keyboard, but uh, show up and help. If you want to do something about it, this is going to help move the needle a little bit. But to reiterate what was said earlier, to show the county and show the officials and people that are involved how important and how passionate we are about these projects so again july 19th six o'clock catawba ridge high school i think more importantly for penelope's sake she's asking for us to either confirm 
or shift accordingly yes. to the yeah. order of prioritization that we agreed to in the last meeting. I understand there's some discussion to that order. Is yeah, there? I just had some, I always I'm deal with data and ask Chris for some data count, trip counts. And um, right now I know where the, where the current pennies for stops and where mm -hmm. the new one, where we're all hashing out right now, where it will begin. And after, you know, I'm just thinking, I try to think down the road to once all the, just the residential piece of Elizabeth's built out, that um, trip to count's gonna be 11,312. That's daily, Chris? Those daily for the traffic. So right. And there, uh, you know, that's not all distributed onto Formal Parkway, but that gives you an idea. Right. And when that development agreement was struck eight years ago, there was a count given to us a study and we made the needs that were required for that development mm -hmm. agreement known at that period of time and that developer has followed through yeah, those traffic far. mitigation yes. yes i'm not yes. discounting any of that i know I'm i not. just want to make sure we I, don't leave the wrong impression on the table i know that. i'm not discounting the town at all i'm just looking at trip counts i work in data all day and i just don't see that de decreasing is there any way to know a shot in the dark at what the commercial component trip count could be for that at this time we don't necessarily know what that commercial is guaranteed to be because um, we don't know so what we businesses are going to be able to yeah. state so are you trying to make a point councilman moody that we need to elevate the bypass in the prioritization is that what you're I would, I'm, intimating yes if you want to know that's what i'm i, do I would want like to, know. to move I that think this to number two deserves to know yeah i'm yeah. just trying to have a discussion well that's all get, i'm not meaning to no i just i here. just think it's important with all of this that we all understand what it is you're i'm just presenting information towards. that was it after seeing the presentation last week of what the the Fort Mill Parkway was going to look like with having the bike lanes, I, I kind of changed my mind as well in moving up the Fort Mill Parkway up, at least up a notch. I still say 21 is the most important. Um, but moving that up, we talk about connectivity and, and having ways to get around without being in a car. Having those dedicated bike lanes going all, at least you know from there all the way over the whole book Holbrook Road is, and I think that's. And where are they going to be riding those bikes? What is the destination for that? I ask this in every RFATS meeting. It's a start. I'm all good for recreation. I'm all good for putting money right. into pedestrian crossings if they're unsafe. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working on a trail, so I think that's great. But I, I want to make sure that if we're going to ask for money, mm -hmm. that if we're going to get money for bike paths. Is that more important than three laning North White or do you see what I'm saying? Oh, I just I, want I to agree. make sure. No, I would love to see I mean you know me, I'd love to see all four of these, but if 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 had to choose, I would move the parkway up to two personally. After seeing that. Again, it's and not it's the not the thing. Yeah, from the three laning of North White. Yes. Again, I'd love to see the, the roundabout there, but if I had to choose between the two of those I'd pick the parkway. Okay. So for clarification, the widening of the parkway, how wide are we making it then? Uh, what's the recommendation? Five lanes? Five. The recommendation was three lanes, yeah. which the um, uh, Highway 160 interchange project would be three laning um, basically up to that point, uh, or, or three laning um, White Street up to that point. Um, and so you would have three lanes basically to the roundabout okay at least three lanes I mean they're five laning up to um, highway 160 and I think even continuing that a little bit mm -hmm. uh, past the 160 intersection but um, the, the choke point so to speak in that uh, area is um, where you have the the cross streets from Bass Street uh, going down uh, to Walter Elijah Park where if you're exiting town going towards the interstate if, if anyone's turning left you know you, you don't have a turn lane so you, you're kind of stuck no behind the vehicle so this would be uh, to resolve that issue in addition to resolving uh, the issue of the old nation road intersection which is very difficult to make left-hand turns uh, from old nation on to going into downtown perfect thank it, you it, and then Scars, and, and then for the widening of the parkway, um, it doesn't say specifically how many lanes. What would we be um, asking, for. asking for with that? 
that would be matching the existing Penny's Four project, which would be uh, five laning it with bike lanes and pedestrian uh, uh, um, sidewalks on both sides. Is the length of the parkway or just the whole road? No, the whole road. From U.S. Foods to, yeah. to from the bridge from the bridge yeah. to Holbrook Road, which makes some, sense. Mm -hmm. uh, to Mr. Moody's point, to Allen's point, it makes sense. The only caveat I have is to juggle, and it is a juggle between does that need to be first or the 21? I'm fine leaving 21 as number one because it's a regional project. I think that would really garner support of, of the Rock Hill. Yeah. And I, I, my main concern would just be moving um, the, the parkway to two. I and think that with, makes sense to me. I, yeah. I'd love to see the roundabout without getting that I think we're gonna have to really put some thought into saying no left-hand turn there yeah, because it is unsafe and and without some mitigation in some form mm -hmm. I, I'm just saying if that's the reason we put it on there then perhaps we need to look at a light no left turn something to mitigate that but I don't disagree with moving traffic and and getting rid of the congestion I don't have a problem at all yeah. uh, but it's all up to y'all I only have one perspective well, I don't have a problem with moving that problem. I'll support whatever the consensus is because we need all of them uh, my my concern uh, I don't say concern the, the, the widening 21 bypass when, when there's a problem 77 mm -hmm. it's a nightmare yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a regional nightmare. but it's only a couple times a year the safety issues at Old Nations, Ford, and White Street are every day. Someone's going to get injured right there, and we're going to—that's going to be my concern. Older people come to me all the time. They say they cannot get out there. It's—they're pulling out in traffic. You got somebody's going to run off into Elisha Park. It's just—it's an everyday four mill citizen is being impacted. The 21 bypass is passed through traffic. That's that when they're going to dump off 77, four lane 21 is going to help, 21 bypass, it's still not going to solve it because it can't handle the traffic that, that I-77 that I does. Also, I'll go with the, I understand the concerns on all the growth on Fort Mill Parkway. Um, a lot of pass through traffic all, there too. All, But all, all I'm saying of that is I, I would move 21 bypass down because it's only a couple times a year. Fort Mill Parkway's every day White Street's there every day, and I'm, those are the ones I hear about, but well, I, they're all important, so I'll support whatever the consensus is. Well, last time before the four of us were here, our top two projects were 21 mm -hmm. and the bypass, and I think you build on synergies, you build on what you have. This is me talking, and I think that it would been a, if you look at the map i, I see to councilman wolf I, I do have a great concern about that safety issue but for as far as a regional impact i think having one project is one and two last time and moving one of your top two down to three this time just seems the order seems different i know we have a different council too and i respect those opinions as well yeah um so and i'll let yeah. you speak yeah. yeah the only thing i was going to just indicate is all the discussion about 21 um, Mr. Wolf, you don't make points that aren't right. Your points are given. But the reason for the widening of 21 was we made a, a decision in which we began the widening already at Carowinds on 21 down to Gold Hill and then from Gold Hill to 160 and then from 160 to the bridge. And part of the reason that we elevated that was, yeah, you're right, it doesn't happen very often, but that last wreck on 77 before the Catawba River Bridge, you could not get ambulances, fire trucks. You, Fort Mill was locked down. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. we were in a position that, you know, we were, I don't want to use the word helpless, but it certainly was a critical situation. So in looking in that, it's more than just a frontage road concept. It is a concept that would at least give us some options we don't currently have. So I, I think everyone's making really great points. It's just, I guess in my mind, I also look at what do I think we can get. Sure. You know, I, I, and I that's don't want to. I was asking. Yeah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to put something we can't get and then we don't get right. the the remaining. But again, mm -hmm. I think we have to put all our heart into what we think is necessary, or we don't ask. And it's like, yeah, um, the mayor's point. We also we, think that. 
21 is not only our problem, it's also Rock Hill's problem. And well, Ronnie, you have just put on the table what I fuss about every mm -hmm. RFATS meeting. <laughs> you know, the, the traffic in Fort Mill and the congestion in Fort Mill is not just Fort Mill. No. You know, we sit between competing entities that travel through Fort mm -hmm. Mill. We're a connector. Mm -hmm. We have people from Indian Land trying to get to 77. We have people from Rock Hill trying to get to Charlotte. We have people from Ballantyne that don't want 485. They right. prefer to come this way to try to get into a faster lane of traffic. So we are stuck yep. um, in the middle to be able to garner the support that I think we should have. It shouldn't be on population headcount. It should be on trip count. Okay. And our trip count is just astronomical. Right. Um, so I do talk about this every RFATS meeting. Right. I think the one thing that I would like to note is we, we sit up here and we talk about safety a lot. I think... Um, number one in my mind is the the three laning uh, White Street I look at the 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 largest impact for the least amount of money and I think the rest of this I get is convenience versus the roundabout at White Street or something of that nature is more of a safety issue um, and we preach that week on month after month after month and there are a lot of things in place I think that would facilitate this a lot easier and a lot less uh, or it would be much more cost effective than much of these other projects which are very warranted i think the 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 parkway project is still very relevant but i think the easiest to do the lowest hanging fruit so to speak would be the the widening of white street and would be easiest to accomplish then we move on to something else i think we were also in hopes when we first started discussing this that the roundabout would help regulate yes. the heavy traffic on 160 instead of it being backed mm -hmm. up and stopped, backed up and stopped, that that would help regulate. I think all, and, and I've got two policemen mm -hmm. back there that will shed light on the safety aspect. Traffic circles are to keep traffic <coughs> moving but regulate the speed. Is that correct? Absolutely. I just want to make sure I'm saying what I'm saying is right. Well, Thank okay. you. Thank you. Because the speed you coming in and, and out of town, yes. I go through and out there, mm -hmm. in and out there a lot. Mm -hmm. Coming into town, they're still running 45 miles an hour when they go past the walking park, yeah. and they're already up to 45, you know, before they even get through the intersection right by them. I think we have a new business <coughs> opening also across right. from Walter Elijah that we're going to have to really pay attention to pedestrians or people wanting to cross from the park. I don't know, maybe they'll view the parking at the park as better than, you know, can't get across. Right. They're going to be on foot. Okay. So um, I'm not opposed to pedestrian improvements or cycle lanes, but I am more to Ben and Chris's point. I think we have to look at where we know we have safety oh. implications that that we could address. Would, I mean, would this they, is number one. Uh, would they, if I'm just let's just talking in sound. So, if we could, you just do the round. Do you have to have the additional roadage road for the roundabout that we recommended to to make it? I'm not a transportation person to make it feasible and work. Call and we're talking. Are you are you how it's listed today? It says three lane north white. Yeah, are I'm you just saying just do the roundabout. I'm or? just throwing this out here for our council to just. I think that has to be engineered. I don't think yeah. any of us yeah. sitting we here today have an engineering yeah. degree in traffic but, movement. But I've, I've, I've go through that way pretty often, and uh, Chris <clears throat> mentioned the turn lane. There's a lot of times somebody's wanting to turn it, it all backs up. So, but uh, may I have just a, I won't say point of order, because that's actually a real thing. Sure. Que a, a question with our, so we're talking about four things, and I'm assuming everybody's submitting four. Mm -hmm. But we're kind of talking like we only think two are going to make it. We don't know. I mean, just so we, historically, we do, how does that? What's our odds? Because we're talking I mean, about. I know all four are not going to make it. It's up to the it's commission. Three, two, right? two, two, if we're lucky. I mean, that's kind of way we're talking. We might be lucky if another jurisdiction has the same thing um, priority. Mm -hmm. um, like so, if Rock Hill also I, had. I believe Tiga K had number one priority, the widening of of the bypass twenty one. So, you know that 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 might be a given. On, because they on. have to use that too if mm -hmm. there's a problem gotcha okay i was just just curious well and, and that's a good question it's a good question but i'm going to ask a question tonight i think we all have 
passion for getting the best that we can on the table. We do. Mm -hmm. I'm questioning, can we really make that decision tonight? Do we need to give it another two weeks and return to it on our next meeting? So when do you need a final to be prepared? You need it before then, don't you? No, well, not? I just need to do my presentation before 4th of July. Okay. So mm -hmm. the end of June, mm -hmm. if I could have everything. So the next council meeting, I believe it's, is it the 24th? 26th. 20, okay. Yeah. 26 that gives me enough time and it's not that we can't make a decision I just want us to make the best sure. decision and it you know we all have points of perspective that are important and are right mm -hmm. but they're in competition with other points so I think a little more discussion is probably not yeah. a bad idea yeah, well last time we we got our top two and mm -hmm. they did some close Sam Smith some other stuff up there and that was on the pennies four. Yeah, uh, I don't list. think we requested the closing of Sam Smith, did we? Well, that was, no, we did not request that, the closing yeah. of Sam Smith, but we, we did sort of get three last time with um, those intersection improvements on Sutton. Not really mm -hmm. in Fort Mill, per se, yeah. but they certainly impact the Fort Mill traffic. So, um, And that's what you were saying, or one of you uh, said, yeah. if it's regionally important and works with someone else's request, the likelihood mm -hmm. of funding mm -hmm. and selection is much higher. Right. Correct. That, that is correct. Yeah. Okay. And it sounds like we're all agreeing on the projects. It's just a matter of priority. So yeah. when it comes to your part of what you need to get done, you can go ahead and get started with it. Um, is there a way we can find out um, what TGK is doing or who has the vote for the non-incorporated part of York County north of the river? So is that is York County um, doing projects here too? So how are they, the people and constituents in that non-incorporated going to be represented? I believe through York County, but I can reach to my counterparts and, okay. and see what they can provide me okay. if they've already made the resolution. Because if that's the case, you would assume that Tiggy K and that group as well as us are all asking for 21. So uh, basically you, you have to have this this part done before your public meeting. So Tiggy yes. K has already had their public meeting, so okay. they've already provided their recommendations. I don't know off the top of my head which others have done that yet, but I do know TVK, so we can get that one for I you. I think we're last, are we not, for the public yeah. meeting? I think we're, we're close, close to it. To we're real close August, to it, we're not. We're real close. Yeah. I think City of Rock Hill has already so had it. to ask, to follow up on uh, Lisa's question, so a lot of the stuff in Fort Mill is not in the town of Fort Mill. We all know that. Yeah. Right? We, I, we all can, Where do you live? Well, you don't live in the town, but you live in the township and blah, blah, blah. So the uh, so 21 most of that 21 bypass 90% that's not in the town city in the city limits so who so who would represent that from the county would that be our county representatives yes. or yes that's Tom Odette and uh, Debbie, Debbie Cloninger okay. that's, because they represent that portion of the that's county what I would have thought at about. RFATS gotcha. yes okay. that is correct thank you so yeah that's what I just want to make sure that's what yeah. I would assume but I don't want to assume yeah. anything yeah we need any dialogue on the paving, or is that pretty much I no issues those there. are the top four? Fairway Drive to Wolfpack, the I'd be done because the yeah. roads fell apart. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bank Street is the right. Yeah, so it's bad. Yeah. So, so those four will are we'll fine. discuss. I think okay. the resurfacing, I'm good with that order. That mm -hmm. was the order y'all yeah. brought to right. us. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I certainly think they're, I drive the city streets quite a bit and they're on target mm -hmm. uh, the pedestrian improvement I think is in alignment with our thinking on we need safer avenues for people to walk about downtown so I don't know that we would get it but I certainly think it's the right thing to ask for mm -hmm. but um, open for anyone else's comments so do I need to make a motion I don't think I can but to defer to def can I make a motion uh, no. No. Do we do we need to defer? Yes, we need a motion. Yes. I'll make a motion to defer uh, new, business new, business item. Item. new business item number one mm -hmm. to our next standing mm -hmm. meeting. Thank I'll you. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it was really good discussion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it helps us to hear everybody's perspective and uh, get to the point that it's what we all have agreed to, okay? 
New business item number two, 2023 firing of the cannons, a resolution designating the bandstand and Confederate Park located on Main Street as the site of a public event and to authorize a special event permit for live music, sound amplifying equipment and firing of the cannons on Tuesday, July 4, 2023 at 10 a.m. <coughs> until 11 a.m. Jacana is our subject matter expert. So, Jacana, is there anything we don't understand about your initial presentation? No, no, everything is in the resolution. The, the Does everyone times. understand what the request is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My only concern is that you have really framed it. It's one hour. So if you have any delays with whether or want to postpone it 30 minutes or any of that, are you um, limiting yourself by only giving one hour during that morning, or do you feel comfortable with that? I think, think you said nine when you would start the activities of closing off, that. right? Yeah. 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 So, so if we the, did have to adjust it within the two-hour window, we could. Um, so we're going to open it and then reclose it again? Is that correct? No. And close it early in the morning. And then close it at, as soon as we can at nine, fire yes. the cannons at 10, nope. open <coughs> it back up at 11. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And if there's a weather event, then we can adjust accordingly. Okay. It is it's pouring down rain. We just still fire the cannon. <coughs> they can still, yeah, they're they're electronically charged yeah. or discharged. I think the question is that's if it, if we do mind. delay it since we've specified only for one hour between ten and eleven. I think that's your question. Yeah, that's my question. So does it, do we need to say between nine and twelve or to give her some flush? I, I, I mean, it's a valid I, question. I understand the question, but I, I think you know what if it's still raining at twelve? I think we set the schedule and we deal with the outcome. That's fine. It just yeah. that, what would you guys like for us to do? Since you'll be the ones directing traffic, and I know you're part of the event well, committee, Stephen. So. Yeah, well, uh, one point about the closure: the closure, uh, the bulk of the closure from nine to eleven will only be that main street section. Yeah, we'll do it the way that we have in years past, where when it's time to fire the cannons, prior to them being loaded, we'll shut down that White Street section. So that'll be a limited amount of time because a lot of those folks are using White Street to get into Veterans Park. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we, for events, year in and year out, we've, we've had pretty uh, strict times on what we request for a closure and uh, make adaptions where we have to, but I think I think it's fine the way we are because they, they account for what they're doing. And we've practiced a number of times since this is the 51st year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he hasn't been there all 50 yeah. years. He's <laughs> not that old, I know. <laughs> Well, and just but I am. The, the ordinance we're asking for is not for closing Main Street. It's clo is for the noise and the sound as well, correct? Right. It's the side of a public event and authorized and a special event. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Okay. As long as it happens by 11, well, I, I don't want to be the one at 11.15. Again, it's, it's electronically discharged, so if we keep it dry then we should be fine okay god willing yeah keep your powder dry you always put up a tent right we can we can adjust accordingly okay okay i'll make a motion to approve <laughs> new business item number two second. i'll second all those uh, we have a motion to approve and a second all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. all those opposed thank you New business item, might as well stand there, Jacana. New business item number three, 2023 Independence Day celebration in town of Fort Mill's 150th party, a resolution designating Walter Elijah Park, 345 North White Street on Monday, July 3rd, 2023, 6 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. as the site of a public festival in which alcoholic beverages may be sold possessed and consumed and to authorize a special event permit for live music and sound amplifying equipment and to authorize a fireworks display for Monday, July 3rd, 2023, 6 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. at Walter Elijah Park, 345 North White Street. The fireworks display will be at 9.15 p.m. Questions? Make a motion to accept new business item number three. I'll second. Okay, I've got a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you. 
New business item number four, Main Street Jams Resolution. A resolution designating Main Street, Tom Hall Street to Academy Street, is the site of a public festival on Saturday, June 17th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday, September 16th, 2023 from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. in which alcoholic beverages may be sold, possessed, and consumed to authorize a special event permit for live music and sound amplifying equipment, Jacana. Is there anything different from previous jams? No, no, this is it. Does, does anyone have a question in regards to this request for a jam? Hearing um, none. I have one question, just a clarification, Davey. So the section 2434C says, uh, or outstanding events of non-commercial character. So. What are you referring to? The actual ordinance, oh, actually the okay. code. Okay. So I guess you'll be asking Chris. So is the are more RTs not considered a commercial? This would be well. What what we're classifying this is this is for any general member of the public. So that's why it's a non-commercial. It's it's not private. It's open to the public. Okay. So I, think I just need to clarify. Definitely. I get the town events because they are not. But this is truly we're saying a more RTs in you know. So they are okay. I got well, you. And it's, it's not supposedly it's just them. Yeah. It is no, but supposedly I, but a co-op of other Yeah, I just want to, yeah, just want to make, understand when I yeah. read that. That's clarification. Okay. Thank you. Further questions? I make a motion we approve new business item number four. I'll second. I have a motion to approve in a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you. There are no information discussion items this evening. There are no executive session items this evening. Um, we'll start with Mr. Wolf. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, there's a lot of uh, wonderful events going on in the uh, in our community, and really looking forward to the opening of the 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 uh, stormwater mural. That's that's great. The celebration of our 247th uh, birthday of the country and the 150th anniversary of the town. So, um, I think the, these type of events are what makes our community one of the great things it is the only other thing I have to say is uh, I noticed there's a lot of pedestrian traffic out now to all the, the other night Main Street was back we had to go down to Indian land believe it or not just to the people please be aware there's a lot of pedestrians out a lot of children out schools out so just put your phone down watch where you're going slow down because mm -hmm. there's a lot there's a lot of people out walking mm -hmm. quit blowing that hole good <laughs> yeah i'm sorry okay um <laughs> mr sorry. moody no it's a great meeting tonight it's really cool to see all the community involvement with the people that put in the effort to, to paint all that um i always thought it would be cool to learn how to paint but god did not bless me with that uh, i learned that at a very young age uh, staff yeah, thank you i saw you. your picture when you were painting your bedroom yeah it was it was really good yeah i had Warm paint all over my face yeah. uh, staff thank you for answering all my questions and um trying to make good decisions for our town and, and uh, thank you for everything you do thank you chicanos and for everything putting all these events together i know y'all are all very busy and we it doesn't go unnoticed so thank you all Ronnie. Looking forward to the 4th of July. Looking forward to the rest of the summer. Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes. Uh, I've got tomatoes. All righty. Okay. I picked five today. Oh my goodness. Nice. Lisa. Um, so I know several council members uh, attended the jazz night in the park. Um, we had a great time. Staff, y'all did a phenomenal job. It was a lot of fun when I think of jazz I didn't think of some of the music we had there so I was pleasantly surprised that it gave me a different taste in some of the music um, that was performed the food vendors were phenomenal my husband and I intentionally split up to a couple of them so we could sample each other's yeah. food and then you had to have a funnel cake because I didn't get one at strawberry festival so the um, food choices were great they were really good and highly recommend it um, great job planning that the other thing I wanted to mention too is while we're coming together as a community and hopefully it is always for good reasons I know our community lost um, a citizen a few weeks ago who had gone missing and while that was really devastating to the family it was also very um, humbling and cherishing to see how many people who didn't even know this family 
who were posting comments trying to help find and help locate him so again we're a community um, and community to us means family and we treat everybody as our own all the time so thank you all who came out to try to help that family and um, we've had a lot of sorrow in this community the last few weeks so let's just say an extra prayer for all of those that may have lost loved ones mm -hmm. and say an extra thank you and some blessings to those that help keep us safe every day and that we had come home to so hope you guys have a wonderful week Alan? Uh, just another reminder stormwater ribbon cutting but again I'm just <laughs> amazed at just how awesome that that project is it really you is it's so to cool see your artwork oh, mm. kind of do, yeah. <laughs> what's kind of neat is there's a there's a goof uh, out there see if you can <laughs> see if you can find it if somebody uh, dropped some paint somewhere it wasn't supposed to be but instead of uh you know leaving it or picking up they turned it into more art so see if you can find that when you go out there and take a look at it uh memorial day we had a couple weeks ago um it was a, a beautiful event it wasn't hot this time but it did rain mm -hmm. a little bit yeah. Yeah. But um, just always a, a, a great uh, event, somber event. Um, when you hear taps playing, if it doesn't give you cold chills up your spine, then you need to, you know, you need to check your pulse there. Uh, beautiful weather, getting into good sweating weather. Uh, Fourth of July celebration, or third of July celebration, is gonna be, is gonna be a blast. Fourth of July cannon firing is gonna be awesome as always. Uh, but with the fireworks, um, your dogs, make sure, yeah. make sure your pets, make, you know, check your gates, check your fences, chains, whatever, make sure your dogs have their tags on them chipped whatever it is there's so many dogs that get freaked out including my own um with fireworks and they they run off and there's just so many that just disappear during this time so please keep up with that make sure they get plenty of water it's hot that's all i got ben? Yeah. just just that was very impactful with the officer here mm -hmm. uh, that just really resonated with me a lot um seeing the all the people here that were part of the art art project i mean it makes me think how we see negativity, all the Facebook and the Instagram and the, all the, this stuff. But hey, people are here for a reason, mm -hmm. in this town for a reason. There's a lot of passion here for hometown. And to see that, I mean, if, if that doesn't make you hometown proud, I mean, I literally, hairs of my arms are standing up when we were talking. I know. If that doesn't make you hometown proud, there's something wrong with you. Um, but no, appreciate the, the opportunity to be up here. Um, just a, a quick, Shout out my uh, father who passed away about three years ago. I know mom's watching. It says Ty. So, kind of cool to recognize him. But uh, anyway, friendly. yeah, yeah, he would be proud. But okay. anyway, mama. just uh, appreciate everybody up here. I <clears throat> I really appreciate the healthy dialogue. I think it's so important. Um, we were all in a, meet, a meeting recently with a lady who was very familiar with uh, doing things with a lot of municipalities and things and she, she made the comment she said truthfully it was kind of odd because she she kind of spoke it was a little unusual the way she stopped and paused and she said you know i work with municipalities all over the united states literally she's from coast to coast she's bouncing around all over the place and she said i rarely find a group that works together as cohesive as what you guys can be and and having civil conversation it's okay to disagree but be constructive and and i was really taken back by that i think there's a lot of mutual respect here Absolutely. so that was uh it was neat to to hear it's not just us just us that think that way well until you, you bring up that clemson stuff and he brings up alabama <laughs> that's kind of, you know, kind of get off the rails that's right Don't then we roll up our sleeves right? still in the majority yeah, yeah. that's right <laughs> so to end out i too wanted to echo it's interesting alan you're reading my mind um fourth of july fireworks it's not just your pleasure um it is also an activity that often can cause um trash in others yards um, it can cause excitement to dogs cats other animals so do please use a respectful nature uh, vacation bible school seems to be happening at a number of churches mm -hmm. i've seen a lot of kids out and about so please um, be careful memorial day i actually had um, a voicemail that the town staff had forwarded to me from someone a veteran that had come from chester because they heard ours was somewhat special and it was this long but it was absolutely beautiful awesome. the thanks um, that was given to the thought that goes into ours mm. it's very special and i appreciated that it's really nice to get a phone call like that um <laughs> 
public utilities, people, public works, guys, it's storm season. Um, you know, there's always debris after a storm. I know this past um, Sunday, I was at a funeral and lightning struck a tree in the front yard of the church yeah. and big pieces were out in the road. And, you know, when all of us are trying to get in out of the rain, they're yeah. the guys and Going girls out. that go out there and take care of making safe passage yeah. for all right. of us. So if you're having, you know, trees at your house, please put it out of the road. They pick it up and we need to remain safe for everyone. Um, please slow down uh, again with Officer Harriet. These folks put their life on the line for us mm -hmm. every single day. So let's, let's at least give them the respect they deserve. Um, and quit blowing your horn. I, I promise you, I've never seen such impatience in all my life. <laughs> Goodness gracious, we're in the South and we do things a little slower, but that doesn't mean that we're not intelligent. We just do it a little slower because we want to live longer. Stop blowing the horn. Stop cutting in front of people. So <laughs> please stay out of the left lane. Yeah, just stay in your lane. Calm down. Stay in your lane. <laughs> With that, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. You make a motion. We adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you so much. We enjoyed having you here this evening.